Hi everybody, Ryan Dorn here from 360 Ad Sales Training and Strategy. And on behalf of your friends and my friends over at Shweki Media, thanks so much for participating in another Educational Booster webinar. Today we're gonna to talk through 10 ways to avoid the summer ad sales slump. And what do I mean by that? Gosh, it seems like every summer we've got so many excuses and so many reasons why advertisers are not buying our media. And what I have found is summer is a great time to sell advertising to nationwide and local advertisers. Let's get going. Idea number one, and that is, where are you at with agency RFPs? Now, a lot of you will not focus in on agencies until the fall, and what I have found is very often, it's just too late. A lot of my friends that are media buyers at agencies large and small actually begin to put together media plans for their customers beginning in July and August, and they'll actually begin to make the media buys as they roll towards the fall. Now, don't forget, you need to get on an agency's RFP list. You need to get on their radar, and that's gonna take four or five months in and of itself. Now, how do you really do this? I would encourage you to consider creating some really great sales demos that you can put together on video. Make them short, keep them under two minutes, really explain your audience. Remember, typically, agency media buyers are not buying space or time. They're buying audience, and they're buying engagement. So explain to the media buyer how you can help them engage with your very vibrant and robust audience. So block out some time to engage agencies and make sure you're on the RFP list. And this summer, create some great tools like sales videos to get your information in front of these crazy busy media buyers. All right, idea number two, and that is get rid of the excuses. All right, now I know it's easy for me to say. You're probably like, oh, Ryan, easy for you to say. Remember something, guys, I sell media every day too. One of the things I've found is that when you get rid of the excuses, <laughs> that's when you start finding the results. Listen, there's an excuse for everything, truly. I mean, I've been married for 18 years. I've got two kids. Excuses run rampant all around those two scenarios, and I hear it in my sales life too. Guys, a lot of times I just need to stop making excuses for why things aren't getting done or why advertisers aren't calling me back. What I need to do is always stop, take a little evaluation of my own character, my own circumstances, my own time management pitfalls, and create an action plan for success. So every time that you come up with an excuse or you hear an excuse, write it down, and then right next to it, put together an action plan, four or five ways that you're going to get away from that excuse. Remember, once you get past the excuses, that's when you'll start finding results. All right, tip number three to avoid the summer ad sales slump, and that is really begin to review your comparison reports to make sure you're not missing any advertisers from last year. Now, how do you do this? In a lot of your CRM tools, you can actually go and pull a comparison report, or you might need to actually go and pull the same issue from last year. So as an example, let's say that you're selling into the August issue. You'd wanna go look at last year's August issue and see who ran to make sure that you're not missing anybody. Also look at last year's July, also last year's September, and begin to put together some comparison reports. Now, if you use a CRM tool, for example, like the Magazine Manager, you need to learn how to run comparison reports. Now, you might say, Ryan, why in the world would I need to pull a report for that? I know the people that ran. One of the things that I find very interesting is that very often in working with senior level salespeople, I will find that they actually don't run comparison reports and they really live in the now. They live in the current moment. That's great and that's awesome, but we also have to make sure we don't forget anybody that ran at the exact same time last year. Now, don't forget, advertisers are very cyclical. They tend to advertise in seasonal blocks. So because of that, of course, we wanna to try to sell them out of that, get them to advertise every month, right? But we need to go back pull our comparison reports, and look at it. 
and also in detail if you uh, have access to uh, websites or companies for research like Magazine Radar or ICS, companies like that, you want to go look in your competitors' magazines at the exact same time last year and see who was running there as well. All right, idea number four on how to keep selling strong and avoid that summer ad sales slump is go to your competitors' websites and refresh those websites 10 times to make sure you know who's currently running. Now, some of you don't actually realize this, and so this is the point of learning for you. Go to a competitor's website, take note, and make notes of the current banner ads that are running. Then what you want to do is refresh the page. Now, a lot of you know this, but for those of you that don't, let me explain it. You're going to see a different set of banner ads. Then refresh the page again and make notes. Refresh the page again and make notes. In most circumstances, when you refresh a web page 10 times, you will typically see all banner ads that are in rotation on that website. Now, keep in mind, sometimes banner ads are set at a heavy rotation. So you might need to refresh that page 15, 20 times to make sure that you see all the ads. Now, why is this important? It's important because very often it's easy to convince an advertiser that's currently running to advertise with you on your website if they're already fully engaged on another website, especially if they're getting good results. Now, what I like to do and how I coach uh, my sales customers through this is I go to competitors' websites once a week. I have an Excel spreadsheet and I keep track of those people that are active and currently running with my competitors. What I find found over the 20 years that I've been in the sales and marketing business, it's much easier to convince somebody to advertise that's already advertising. When you've got to convince someone to advertise that never advertises, usually that's a lot harder. All right, now on to tip number five. I want you to consider this review together as a group your 10 critical ad sales questions. Now, a lot of you have questions that you ask on every single sales call, but let me throw this challenge out to you, and that is, okay, truly, what questions are you asking that are different than every other media salesperson that's gonna show up in front of that advertiser or that's gonna call that advertiser? Now, if you wanna see my 10 critical questions, send me an email over to ryan at 360adsales.com. I'd be more than happy to, to send those to you, but you need your own as well. So what are a couple of the critical questions that I really, really like to ask? Well, one of the first ones that I always ask is, if we create the perfect ad for you, what do you want to have happen from that ad? Again, if we were to create the perfect ad for you, Mr. or Mrs. Advertiser, what do you want to have happen from that ad? Now, why do I ask that question? And why do most media sales reps actually not ask that question? I like that question because I want to be able to manage their expectations. I want to know, hey, what do you want to have happen from this ad? Because what if they say, I want to sell 50 Rolex watches? You know, I mean, we all know that's probably not going to happen, right? So we want to manage their expectations. All right, another question that I like to ask that most don't is I'll ask, how do you outperform your competition? I want to find out where their ego is at. What areas do they think that they outperform their competition? Now, what are some common questions that, in my opinion, you shouldn't ask? I would never ask a customer to tell me more about their business because there's this thing called the internet, so I should already know that, okay? Now, I don't want to go in being arrogant, I don't want to go in thinking that I know everything, but I do want to go in with enough knowledge to let that advertiser know that I've done my homework. All right, what's another question that I never ask? Tell me about your marketing plans. Tell me about your marketing goals. Okay, listen, I was a marketing director for a good part of my career before I really get into hardcore sales. And whenever an advertising uh, sales rep would ask me that question, I really wanted to reach across the desk and just punch him in the nose, okay? <laughs> because I don't have time for that. I don't want to waste my time explaining my goals to you. What do you have to offer to me? What can you do that will impact my business? What's new, what's fresh, what's different? So those 10 critical questions, get together as a group and review those 
to make sure that on every sales call, you're asking the best questions that you can ask to avoid getting into that summer sales slump. All right, next tip for us, tip number six, and that is review your personal accountability to your prospecting plan. Review your personal accountability to your prospecting plan. Now, customers of mine typically work a, a program that I like to call the Big 50. The Big 50, or 5050, is all about working 50 brand new customers in the next 30 days. So over the next 30 days, we're going to work in a certain pattern, 50 customers using an aggressive pattern of voicemails and emails. We're always going to work 50 to use our math, our sales math, to our advantage. So do you have a top 25? Do you have a big 50? Do you have a big 100? Do you have a certain pattern, a templated pattern that you're using? See, all too often when we get busy or when we get slow during the summertime or we find ourselves getting into a summer slump, I mean, why do we get into these slumps? I'll tell you why. Because you look out the window and you see a beautiful day and you say to yourself, holy cow, why am I even sitting here in the office today? I'd much rather be on the lake or riding my bike, or going to the movies, right? So for me, I really need to review my personal accountability to my prospecting plan. I think most of you that have been selling as long as I would would agree, if you don't have a prospecting plan, you're not going to have enough fresh new business coming into your pipeline to account for the lost customers that you might have each and every month. Remember, no matter what you do, you're gonna lose some customers, even if you're great at advertiser retention. So you need those numbers on the front end to make sure that you're always gonna be over goal. All right, next tip in avoiding the summer sales slump, and that is tip number seven, block out in your schedule time for advertiser retention. Block out time in your schedule for advertiser retention. Now, why is this important? Well, it leads us from tip six to tip seven. So you have to be prospecting on the front end and then you need to be retaining customers on the back end. Every day at 10.30 in the morning, I block out 30 minutes to send out non-sales retention emails. Now, let me explain that. And that's just one of the things I do for retention. I also send cookies and I'll send pens and mouse pads and, and things like that. But what I try to do every day is communicate in a non-sales way, a resource-driven way with my advertisers. So what I'll do a lot of times is I will go to ink.com or I'll go to fastcompany.com or I'll go to one of those websites and I'll find um, uh, an article that I think is really relevant to my advertisers. And then I'll send them a link to that article. I might only send out 10 or 15 emails in any given day, but what I wanna do is let my advertisers know that when I communicate with them, it's not always about sales. I also wanna be seen as a resource. The only way to remember to do this is to actually block out time on your schedule for advertiser retention. Besides prospecting, I think that advertiser retention is one of the three most important critical tasks of an ad salesperson's life, of any salesperson's life. Whether you're selling used cars, watermelon, or watermelons or advertising, I think retention is absolutely critical. All right, next tip for you, tip number eight, is make your emails and voicemails strong but short. Now, the reason I bring this up is because very often as time goes on, say you've been in one of my training workshops live at a conference or I've come to your office or, or whatever, you really are always saying, oh, Ryan, I, I love your short email templates. And that's great. But what happens is over the course of five or six months, your emails start getting longer and longer and longer. So if you ever feel like your emails resemble War and Peace or, or Moby Dick, okay, they're too long, all right? Most of the time, the emails that ad sales people send are too long. They're full of fluff. Remember, people are strapped for time now more than ever before. That's point one. Point two, when it comes to emails and voicemails, but especially emails, advertisers scan. They actually don't read. Behavioral experts tell us that most people actually don't read emails. They scan emails. So you want your emails to be short, just a couple of sentences. 
get to the point, promise not to waste the advertiser's time, and if you do have several things to share, break it down into little bulleted points or a bulleted list. So I think that's a tip that all of us need to take to heart. Make sure you've got some great email templates. Don't be rewriting every single email. Spend some time on it. Save yourself some time. But don't forget, as you're prospecting or emailing with customers, to the point, strong emails, but short. And I promise you, your advertisers will appreciate it very much. All right, next tip of 10 on avoiding that summer sales slump. All right, tip number nine. This summer, when maybe you go on vacation, read a sales book to benefit you. Now, a lot of times I know when I go on vacation, people will say, Ryan, do you ever stop working? <sighs> Truly, the answer is no, <laughs> because I love to work. But when I'm relaxing on the beach or on a, if you go on a cruise or you go to the lake or whatever it is, I very often like to read. Now, I might read a James Patterson book or I might read a, you know, a John Grisham book. But I also, in every summer, read at least one sales book. So what are a couple of, of books that you should check out? I would check out Jill Conrath's book called Snap Selling. Um, that's been influential to me. Uh, there's a gentleman named Jerry Acuff. Uh, that wrote a book called Relationship Edge, and I think that's been uh, very helpful. And right now on my website, I'm giving away 100 copies of my book called Selling Backwards. So go to sellingbackwards.com and, and check that out. So all of you Shweki folks, you're getting a heads up on that. So get over there and uh, claim your free copy of that book. So just don't forget, what I really want you to do is consider while you're on your vacation, take a few, few, few hours, if you will, and read a sales book to benefit you, did you know that 90% of salespeople have not read even one business book in the last two years? I don't want you to be that statistic because books will benefit you and grow your salesmanship. All right, last tip of 10 on how to avoid the summer ad sales slump. What is the latest new idea that you're going to present? Figure it out. What is the latest new idea that you're going to present. Now, what very often happens is as we get into a summer sales slump, we start selling media rather than having marketing meetings. So remember, when we get rushed or we get stressed out or whatever the circumstance is, very often we start getting into pitch mode where we're actually just selling our media as opposed to hosting really good marketing meetings with our customers. So sit down as a group and figure out a, something new that you can present. What are some ideas that I've seen uh, work very well over the course of the summer? Business directories. Selling people into your online business directory is a very good idea. Selling someone into multiple banner positions or letting them buy a roadblock on your website, which is a banner at along the top, along the side, and the bottom that's all them. Maybe you sell it to them for an entire day or even for a week or whatever the circumstance is. Multiple ads within the same issue or running ads, uh, two half-page ads across the total spread. Come up with something that's unique and different and get out there and pitch it with a fever this summer because never forget, never forget, if ad sales was easy, everybody would be doing it. And, and they're not. And that's what really makes our circumstance and our situation unique. Now, how do we totally avoid the summer sales slump? To be honest, boy, you really got to work at it. Listen, I'm just like you when summertime comes around, I'm thinking, holy cow, I would, I'm just so looking forward to the vacation. Isn't everybody that way? Well, listen, advertisers are not going to be gone the entire summer season. So you are going to need to sell to them. Take advantage of other salespeople that are in a summer sales slump and get out there and get something sold. I'm Ryan Dorn from 360 Ad Sales. On behalf of my friends over here at Schwecky Media, thanks so much for once again participating in one of our booster webinars. Remember, if there's anything I can do, all Schwecky customers are entitled to a 25% discount off of my services. So reach out to me, ryan at 360adsales.com. And of course, for all your needs when it comes to printing media and so much more, reach out to your friends at Schwecky Media. Take care and best of luck avoiding that summer ad sales slump.